you already know about the structural modeling and data flow modeling from last two episodes. For maximum complex digital design, we need to switch our method to behavioral modeling through procedural coding. Here, the input-output relations are coded like Perl or C language. However, as the Verilog simulation is transient in nature, we have many more functions and procedures from the library to accommodate the digital design needs. In today's episode, we will learn about initial and always blocks in detail. We will design a 2 to 1 marks using these blocks and simulate it using the Vivado and Icarus Verilog. So, without any further delay, let's begin. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss these below points. Verilog modeling methods. Next, we will introduce the concept of behavioral modeling through procedural statements. Next, we will go for the theory and example of initial and always procedural blocks. Next, we will do the procedural modeling of 2 to 1 marks. Next, we will design its test bench to check its functionality. Next, we will do the code simulation by the combination of Gini, Icarus Verilog and GTK Wave or Waveform Viewing. Next, we will do the code simulation with the help of Vivado 2022.1 ML edition. So, we will side by side use two different simulators to simulate our marks and its test bench. So, that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. Verilog Modeling Methods the Verilog modeling types are subdivided into two different parts. The first one is structural modeling, which we have already covered and you know that it is done through the gate primitives. The next one is the behavioral modeling. One subpart of it is the continuous assignment, which we have done in the last episode. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about the procedural assignments. So we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Introduction. The behavioral modeling is majorly done by procedural coding. Now here, if you look, it has two parts, procedural and coding. The coding here is nothing but the Verilog A coding and the procedural, we will come in a short while. This kind of modeling has similarity in coding style with the Perl coding or C style coding. So in case you are either familiar with Perl or C, language as a programming or a scripting language you might be aware with the procedural method of coding which is a very very stark difference with the c++ which is a object oriented or python both of which are object oriented this way you can identify the coding style is a procedural one in case you have previous familiarity However, the transient simulation is done here in contrast with the Perl or C language. So, this one is the difference between the programming language or scripting language and the Verilog language. This difference is the fundamental difference between the two type of procedural coding. That is, the first one is this and the second one is the Verilog. Conditional variation of output with respect to the input are captured with the help of if else blocks. So the if else is a very common construct in any programming language. This is the, I think the first conditional block that you encounter in any programming language and in Verilog we do have it and we use it in the procedural coding. Definite set of input variation are captured to case, case x and case z blocks. So generally in C language or Perl, you will have only case. So this you will find in Perl or C. However, in Verilog, you have two more that is case X and case Z. We will come in detail in some later episode. Looping procedure technique are achieved with the while, for, repeat and forever block. So these two, while and for, you are very much uh, familiar if you have done the C coding or the Perl coding. Now the repeat and forever, these two are new concepts in Verilog. In later episodes, we will get familiarized with these two type of loops. All the initialization of data are done through the initial block. In any of the circuit, the initialization, that is the boundary condition. The first boundary condition, that we do is done in Verilog through the initial block. In a circuit, the boundary condition that is 
whatever condition that the values what should be there before starting the operation is very very important so these boundary conditions are set by the initial block dynamic initialization and change of variable values are captured by the always block so initial is done at the beginning so it is done purpose is done but while the transient simulation is going in case you have to dynamically initialize or you have to change the already initialized variable you have to take the help of the always block we are done with this particular slide so let's move on to the next slide initial and always procedural block Initial block starts at t is equal to 0, execute only once, generally used in the test bench. Initial block is not synthesizable. Initial block, so remember this thing, this initial block start t equal to 0 and it execute only once. So this is the specialization or special thing of the initial block and this block is non-synthesizable with respect to the Verilog synthesis this is a very important point and the greater use is found in the test bench so in last couple of episodes you might have come across the test bench and there you have seen the initial block has been used multiple times in each of the different different examples there can be multiple initial block in the design. This is a very usefulness of an initial block. So initial block initializes the things. However, we can have multiple initial block. Everything will be starting at t equal to 0. Remember this thing. How many initial blocks are there? However, they will start at t equal to 0. Always block starts at t equal to 0, executes in a continuous loop. So this is the beauty of always block always means it's a always on block it runs always that means it happens in a continuous mode block execution is triggered based on user specified condition or sensitivity so the always block for execution it needs some condition or sensitivity generally there is a at the rate symbol and then we have a bracket here and inside that we will have the condition or sensitivity in always here is an example so here is the always so you can see it's written in green and it's a reserve keyword and pausage of clock so here the off is not written here however when we are reading the code as a human being we can read it at always at the pausage of clock so at means at is a time related event so whenever we have a clock transition like this so this is a pausage right so this pausage and this pausage at this pausage, the always block will be sensitized and whatever things are written here inside this block will be executed. Again, at the next pausage, this block will get executed. And uh, remember, if anything changes, negative edge, that means here inside this code, that will get implemented in the pausage. That means this is the first, this is the second. And here something does change, so that will get reflected in the second pausage. Hence, the always block is a very useful thing for the hardware description. The procedural blocks are automatically activated at time equal to zero. So this is a very important thing. Everything starts at time t equal to zero because Verilog is a transient simulation and time always starts at zero. All the procedural blocks and their internal statements are executed concurrently. So this means okay, we have statement 1, statement 2, statement 3. So this will start at time equal to 0. This is start at time equal to 0 and this will also start at time equal to 0. So this is the concurrent operation. Remember this is our stark difference from the programming language where every statement is executed sequentially one after another so in sequence this one will happen first then the next and then the next however in verilog language in the procedural blocks the statements are executed concurrently that means at time t equal to zero this will start this will start and this will start so everything will start at t equal to zero or you have a different like pausage of clock and that time all the statements will execute so at any of the sensitive points or the condition whether if it is coming in the always or if it is by the initial block then at time t equal to 0 it will be executing. Reg is the main data type that is manipulated within a procedural block. A procedural block has data manipulation and reg is a very important kind of data type here and why? It holds the value until replaced with the new value by a new assigned statement. 
we have already come across the assign statement and it's a very short and sweet way of assigning value to a variable and the range is the kind of data type that can hold the value until a new assignment comes into the variable so we are done with the initial and always procedural blocks here for their introduction let's move on to the next slide initial block we will see couple of examples here here first we have the definition initial block then a single statement and then if we have a multiple statement we will have the initial then the begin and multiple statements will come and it will closed by the end statement in case there is only a single statement we don't need the begin and end as here and in case you have multiple statements then begin and end will be there to encapsulate them inside one initial block here let us see some examples we write some module name behavior it's a rough name so just you don't think of any hardware it's just a name for understanding we have range 1 down to 0 for a and b and we have initial begin here we have a equal to 2 tick b 1 0 so that means here you can see a is 2 bit y bus and here the 2 bits of a are assigned by 2 2 means the we will have two values b is binary and 1 and 0 are the binary values that will go inside the a and after the delay time 20 b is assigned with 1 1 and here we close the initial block here we are the opening and here we have the closing Again, we have another initial block here and here after 10 time unit delay, we assign A with 1, 1 and after 20 time unit delay, we will assign B with 1, 0. Here we end our second initial block. So This is the opening and this is the closing similar to this and this. Next, we have initial and we have a finish statement. So I think this will be a dollar finish and here is a typo. So please excuse for that. Generally, it will be a dollar finish and because this is a system command, it will finish up the run of the simulator. There is a typo. Please excuse me for that. And here we end module. So here you can see this is the inline initial statement. We don't have begin or end here because this is a single line inside this initial block. So here we have seen that hashtag time adds the time spacer and advances by the transient simulation by time unit. So here it advances by 20 time units, here it advances by 10, here by 20 and here by 50. So if you add them, so this plus this plus this plus this will be the total time for the simulation. So here if we have the time in the x axis, if we add all the values, it will go to the final t that is t dash. And here all are marked and here we have seen the example of multiple initial blocks this 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 so we have come across three different initial blocks and also we have seen rage reassignment here and here you can see initially it was assigned and later on you can see the reassignments are here because here it is time t equal to zero the assignment and it is reassigned here and you can see here it is reassigned so you can see that the assignments and the reassignments are happening through the initial block so here we are done with the typical definition and example of the initial block so let's move on to the next slide always block let us see through the example here we first have the definition so here the syntax is always then we have a at the rate sign and within the first parenthesis we have the sensitivity list so anything comes here any number of sensitive inputs that will be here that will come under the monitoring of the always block and here goes the statement so this is a single or inline always block and in case we have multiple statements we'll have always then at the rate then the sensitivity list and remember this is a list so there can be one variable two variable three variable as per our design need in the sensitivity list so it's a list and here we have the begin to open up the always block and here we put multiple statements and close it with the end keyword so this way the multiple statements are encapsulated inside the always block here let us see some example non synthesizable because of delay element this you have to remember so here it is a typo it's a delay d l is missing here so delay statement so here always we have hashtag 10 clock and then we have clock inverse so this is a inverse sign this one is the inverse sign which is equivalent to a not get that means after each 10 time units the clock will toggle next we have the synthesizable format 
always at the rate pausage of clock or negage of reset n so here you can see or so this is a conditional operator so either this or this will sensitize the always block codes written here to execute we open up the codes by begin keyword and we put if rstn and we have a bang in front of it that means it's a negation and then we have uh, this is another kind of operator we will come later q equal to zero else if d then again we have uh, another statement here else we have another separate statement so this way we are going through the if else conditions and we end it here and the next one is the end which ends this particular always block and in the next line we begin with the next always block example here we again have the keyword at the red symbol and we have a or b or c or d for sensitive variable list here and we begin the always block by the begin keyword and we put here by this particular statement and then we end the block so here here there can be multiple lines within this particular always block and here we have just came across the multiple always blocks so this one is one example the second example one is this and the third example is this so we have done three different examples of the always block this is just for your knowledge right now you don't have to go into the logic and find the digital output just you get familiarized with how the always block is written there are three typical examples are here those will help you to understand the always block and here this is a non blocking statement so this is not equal to so this is called a non blocking statement so in later episode we will also cover and we will go for the typical details and we also will uh, cover the differences between the blocking and the non blocking statement so this one is a blocking statement is equal to and this kind of arrowhead and then equal to is called the non blocking statement so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide procedural modeling 2 to 1 marks so here this thing comes and here circuit of two down to one marks and here you can see the circuit we, it's a typical symbol here we have input a input b the select switch s and the output is q so this kind of structure is called the max generally this kind of symbol is used for marks in a digital circuit drawing now let us write the code first we write the module statement and here we give a my name two underscore one marks so here we have all the inputs a b s q here in picture we have written all the variables in upper caps whereas in our coding we have used the small cap so this is a difference between the picture and the code input a b s so these three these two and this one are inputs so we have written input keyword and we have placed a b and s against it and we have the output q so q is the output and we have defined the type range for this because this will help in procedural uh, assignments or reassignments as per the change in the a b or s then we have the always block so always at the rate a or b or s now this always block monitors this one this one and this one for any change in either this this or this will trigger the entire always block to get executed here we write the begin keyword here we have written it in the next line we can do that instead of writing it here if a is equal to 0 we have assigned q with a so s for 0 a will go to q so this one else if s equal to 1 q will be assigned with b so this one will be output in the q this is a max logic you have already came across in your digital electronics and this way we are coding it inside the verilog and here we write end and this is the end of always block this end here ends the always here so it is the beginning and this is the end so here the code is encapsulated inside the always block next we use the end module here to close the module here we have used the same name here as a inline comment because in real time verilog code in the industry there will be multiple verilog modules so if we do not put this tail comment as for a human reading we will it will be difficult for us to identify which particular block is ending which particular module is ending so this is a good uh, convention you must follow it so here we have done the coding let us move on to the next slide here we will do the test bench with the procedural modeling for the two to one marks 
So here we start our code, the test bench. So we have a common test bench and then we write our module name as test my 2 to 1 marks. Next we have the register type defined for the A, B and S. Now here if you understand that this reg type will have to hold the value until our next particular time event. So we are defining A, B and S with the type reg which is a bit different from the previous code that means the module definition. Here we write where as Q because as the rates are calculated the exact calculation will go into the Q and we here write the initial begin and here we first write the system command dump file the VCD file we given the name here and dump where so this will dump all the variables that means all of these variables here to into this particular VCD file. Next we write the display command this is nothing but a printf command and this will give the column names for all these variables and here we write a monitor command this is a more dynamic printf command if any of these four or five variables here five variables we have time a b s and q anyone if changes right at that point all the values will be printed here and all the values are tab separated as per this particular display statement so this will print a good truth table in the screen now in the next part of this test bench code we add our stimulus so at time zero we are using a concatenated version of the assignment here with the curly braces and here p means we have three variables here p is binary and we give zero 0 and 1 to this this and this variable so this way in one go we assign three values to the three different variables next we have assigned the 0 0 0 and this way we keep on adding and adding and adding and we finish here at 90 so here you can see here it is correctly written dollar finish so you can see here we have written all the combination for input variation and this input variation of the truth table will trigger the monitor command to measure the outputs and construct a truth table with this two print commands here we end our initial block with the end command next we have the instantiation of the marks that we have done in previous slide so here we have the name of the module and we have the instance name here we and we have given connections to the ports and we have kept the name same to make the port simple here we use the end module keyword to end the, our test bench module in our actual code these two codes are written in the same file so that we have lesser complexity of running the code however they can be written in separate files so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide so we are done with this particular slide and let us move towards the code simulation Hey folks, we are in the directory. Here we have kept the Verilog code for the 2 to 1 marks and let me open a terminal here and let me launch Genie. Here is our Linux terminal inside Genie and here you can see the code. So here is the module of 2 to 1 marks which we have discussed in slides and here is the test bench you can see in the same file we have kept the module as well as the test bench so we will use the icarus verilog to simulate this particular code we will let me do a ls here and let me type i verilog this is the binary for the icarus verilog and we have our 2 to 1 marks dot v here and let me give a output object dump name as marks the simulation has generated the executable dot marks and let me execute this object dump here you can see the marks input variation has been printed and here the output is printed so let me correlate them with the test bench here you can see the input variation is put here using our stimulus vectors and this has been captured here and the time variation which we have done using the hashtag statement has been printed under the time column so and you can see these two print commands have been helpful for printing the entire 
truth table and here you, here you can see that the output is created according to the max operation so let me pick up this one here you can see a is 1 b is 0 and s is 0 so a will be picked and you can see the a has been picked here let me pick one opposite case here you can see here a is 0 and b is 1 and we have s equal to 1 so in this case b will be picked and this one is going to the output so in this way with the investigation you can understand the input output relation that has been tested using this particular test bench and has been dumped here using the simulation with the Icarus Verilog. Now let me do a ls here you can see a vcd file has been created so let me launch the gtk web. So here you can see our max instantiation is there. Let me one by one put them in the window. Let me use the fit screen. So you can see the entire timing simulation has been captured for all these inputs that is A, B, S, and Q here. So if you take your marker here 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 you will see a change here let me do it and you can see in this way if you progress like this you will capture all the states from the waveform so if i put the marker here there is this value if it is here it has this value if it is here you can see i am moving it and the values are changing here in this way putting a marker like this will help you to investigate the values here also we have graphically shown you the max uh, data checking from the vcd file and we are done here with the gtk wave let me close it so here we are done with both the Icarus Verilog simulation using the Genie IDE here and then we have done the VCD file exploration that is the graphics waveform output we have checked to the GTK wave. So we are done here. Now let us move on for the Vivado simulation. So let me launch the Vivado here. So here you can see that the Vivado has started to initialize for the launch. It is starting the GUI. Flash screen has hit the screen. And here you can see our Vivado interface is ready. So let me create a project. So here we click next. Here you can see the project name. So let me change it. And here you can see the path is correctly displayed. Here we have kept our Verilog code. Also, we have chosen create project subdirectory. Next, here we select the RTL project and do not specify the sources at this time. These two options we have checked here. Next, let it keep here. All will be as default. And let me go to the board and select one particular board and hit OK. And we hit next. Here you can see new project summary has been given here. So the project name will be created and this board is uh, used although we are not using any board at this moment for this Verilog simulation however this interface for Vivado gives you the facility to use a Xilinx board. Let me finish here. So let me go for this option add sources. We will pick the option add or create design sources. Since we already have the code written in the file, let me add it. Here you can see the code. Let me pick it. And here in the right hand side, you can see the code preview. So this is the correct code. And here we click on. Here the next thing, let me see the source file here. In the right hand side editor you can see that the code is written here 
in the next stage i will use the run simulation we will check this option and we click on run behavioral simulation so here you can see the test bench is here the vectors for the input uh, stimulus changes and according to that the truth table has been printed here is the time and rest of the input a b s and q so you can see here is the shift in the white space for this couple of values and then there is a shift here so this is because of the character management of vivado so you can see and you can check by yourself right let me pick this one so here you can see a is 1 b is 0 and a is select so select if it is 0 it will pick a and it has picked 1 so it has done the picking up correctly and here in this one you can see right a is 0 and b is 1 and select is 1 so select will pick the b right and it has picked the correct one that is b so this way you can verify the truth table for the 2 to 1 marks and here you can see that all of these input truth table combinations have been correctly executed by the vivado simulator for this truth table now let me open the web form and let me hit the fit screen so here you can see the input a b s and q has been given and if you put your marker here at different points you will get the change in the value here if you go keep on doing this for all the points where you can see visually you can actually get the truth table of this circuit so let me show you here you can see it's uh, 0, 0, 0010 0. and here if we progress our monitoring point and values are actually changing here this way you can check the values from the graph that is the graphical form and here using this kind of marker you can get the exact binary values of all these inputs at any particular time so from that you can also create the truth table and you can verify the design's functionality so folks here we are done with the vivado simulation thanks for watching up to this point and don't forget to like share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today